Hello aspirants, welcome to AKS and welcome to the under session of discussion of anthropology. In this session, let us understand about Homo habilis and this comes under chapter 1.6 in paper 1. In the previous session, we have understood about Australopithecine, that is the Tonks baby. In this session, let us understand about the Homo habilis. And on behalf of AKS, we wish you a very happy, bright, successful and knowledgeable new year ahead. And this is present by me, Shailaja Areti. Now let us understand about this Homo habilis. It, the first fossil of Homo habilis was discovered in Old Y Gorge. So here you can see this Old Y Gorge by Leakey couple that is Louis Leakey and Mary Leakey in Tanzania. So this Old Y Gorge which is in Tanzania in return which is in East Africa. Okay, they have discovered this in between 1961 to 1964. In 1961, Leakey discovered the fossils of Homo habilis and finally in 1964, they named it as Homo habilis. And what do you mean by Homo habilis? Which means a uh, handyman or uh, the maker of the tools. So in this picture, you can see that he is making tools. Now let us understand about the time period of Homo habilis. Homo habilis lived between 2.4 to 1.5 million years ago and according to Leakey he is a contemporary of Australopithecine Bosai and based on the stratigraphy of Old Y Gorge. So here you can see that there is all that is the this, this is the stratigraphy of the earth that is the earth is made up of numerous of layers and this uh, in this layers we see the fossils of a uh, different uh, species okay and uh, around Around uh, 1.8 million years ago in bed one we found that Homo habilis and Australopithecine bose both of the species uh, fossils are actually found that is the reason they are called as contemporaries the species uh, that is Homo habilis species uh, evolved in Africa at a time when traditional forest foods like fruits were becoming scarce and forcing animals to seek out new nutritional sources and as a result what has happened Homo habilis uh, has adopted uh, and they they became omnivores whereas the Australopithecine that the Australopithecine Posse they still dwelled on this fruits and etc that is they are the strict vegetarians and this Australopithecine Posse became extinct this Bosai species genus has become extinct and around uh, 1.7 million years ago in bed to lower we found Homo habilis so by this time around 1.7 million years by this time only Homo habilis is actually living and in bed to upper we see that Homo erectus has already evolved and in bed 3 also Homo erectus and in bed 4 Homo erectus that is in all these phases Homo erectus is still evolving and finally in the later beds around the after 0.4 million years we find that Homo sapiens species has evolved and later we can see in the other layers we can see that Homo sapiens sapiens is evolved okay this Homo habilis, they lived in East Africa at the same time as Paranthropus bosai is actually cohabiting. But they occupied different ecological niches and so were not direct competitors. Okay, because of this thing, they are not direct competitors. Not really that factor, but the other factor is that uh, Homo habilis, these species, they are the omnivores, but these people, they remain strict vegetarians. Okay, and if you are talking about the cultural behavior of the Homo habilis, they mark the beginning of speech and tools to aid meat eating around three million years ago a period of global cooling occurred which brought a steep decline in rainfall in east and central africa so if you consider this to be the africa so in the east and central africa where the australopithecine has actually lived so here what has happened there is a decline of rainfall and as a result what has happened forests and woods gave way to savannas uh, that is the grasslands and stimulated the evolution of homo habilis who lived alongside the early australopithecine around 2.5 million years ago and bipedalism and the growth of larger brain were two major steps in the process of changing from chimpanzee like fear ancestor into modern man and brain case impressions which are taken from Homo habilis uh, suggest that uh, they showed the development in larger areas of the brain indicating a language that is a proto language during this time what has happened proto language has actually evolved 
Now let us understand about the biological features of Homo habilis. In this picture you can see that this is the lineage of Australopithecine. In this picture you can see this is Australopithecine afrinensis, this is Homo habilis, this is Homo erectus and this is Homo neanderthalensis and this is Homo sapiens that is a modern man. If you compare this modern man to that of Homo habilis, he is very short in height. That is he is simply 3 feet tall. So actually what has happened, these hominids were because they were smaller in height uh, that is the re reason Richard Leakey has proposed that they should be excluded from this genus Homo and they have named it as Australopithecus habilis okay so it was short and not only that not only it is short but also its arms are disproportionate to that of their body whereas uh, if you see this in modern man his arms are actually well proportionately arranged okay and it has less protruding face so in this picture you can see the comparison between Australopithecus uh, and that of Homo habilis. In this picture you can see that Australopithecine it has more protrusion. So let me actually draw. So this is Homo habilis whereas if you draw this uh, the, that is uh, uh, sorry for that. This is actually Australopithecine. So this Australopithecine it has more protrusion whereas Homo habilis it has a less protrusion. And if you are talking about the cranial capacity in the previous slide we have already understood that the, the fragments of the skull bones they have suggested that its cranial capacity is around 700 cc. That is the reason they are placed in between uh, Australopithecines and Homo sapiens. When compared to Australopithecus they have developed frontal lobes in brain. They have developed the frontal lobes in brain and reduce bro ridges. So in this picture you can see that here we can see the prominent bro ridges but here that is uh, Australopithecus they have the prominent bro ridges but uh, this uh, Homo habilis they have reduced bro ridges and not only that reduced lower jaw also and the digits of the hands are similar to that of monkeys and apes and characteristics are uh, the characters like structure of hand teeth and the position of great row with other toes are similar to that of modern man and thumb is broad like spatulate. Homo habilis is thought to have mastered the Olduvian era that is early paleolithic tool case which utilizes the pebbles. Not only the pebbles they have used this burin scrapers and etc. We will definitely discuss while discussing about the culture of Homo habilis. Whether Homo habilis was the first hominin to master to stone tool technology, it remains uh, it still remains controversial as Australopithecus gerhi dated 2.6 billion years ago, it has found that they have used some stone tools. Okay, most experts assume that the intelligence and social organization of Homo habilis were more sophisticated than chimpanzees. Cranial capacity was greater than that of Australopithecines and approached Homo erectus. The brain case is rounded here in this uh, we see the brain case is rounded and the top of the skull was more rounded with lesser crust than that of Australopithecines. The teeth in general show human affinity particularly premolars which have two ridges like humans and the size of the teeth vary. Dental arcade was more parabolic so here this is actually the uh, the dental in this uh, you can see the, the dental arcade of uh, Australopithecine it is not uh, that parabolic but the dental arcade of uh, uh, Homo habilis it is more parabolic and the hand limb morphology is clearly like a modern man. Now let us understand about the culture features of Homo habilis. There is a evidence that Homo habilis was a tool maker and the traces of tools are found at Old Y Gorge and East Turkana and also from South Africa. If you are talking about the Paleolithic culture, Paleolithic which means that Paleo means old and Lithic means stone, okay, which means old stone age. So in this Paleolithic culture which began with the appearance of Homo habilis and Homo habilis first appeared in the fossil record around 2 million years ago in lower Pleistocene. For about 1 million years Homo habilis existed with Australopithecus and hence both were contemporary to each other for some period. And the fossil sites of Homo habilis which are discovered since 1961 that is by Richard Leakey and other people which are at uh, Kubifora which is at East Lake of Turkana which is in Kenya and Omo which is in Southern Ethiopia, Hadar in Northern Ethiopia, Leo Tali, which is in Tanzania, Stuck Fontaine which is in South Africa. 
all these show that the homo habilis were the stole makers all these tides and materials reveal that homo habilis population lived in similar climates that is the subtropical savannas near streams and lakes the subtropical savannas were full of grasses which yield grains a variety of trees which provide seeds and several types of plants that supply roots and tubers further the grasses provided good pasture grounds for a number of animals both small and large therefore the savanna supported a great deal of meat on the hoof rodent reptiles ba- birds and lobes boars zebras giraffes elephants hippopotamus lions leopards hyenas the early fossil sites of this australopithecus and the others homo habilis and etc which were discovered at kubifora at east lake turkana which is in kenya homo in southern ethiopia hadar which is in northern ethiopia laetoli which is in tanzania and struck 14 in south africa all this indicate that a homo habilis is actually a stone tool maker and all these sites and materials reveal that the homo habilis population lived in similar climate that is the subtropical savannas near streams and lakes the subtropical savannas were full of grasses which yield grains a variety of trees which provide seeds and several types of plants that supply roots and tubers and not only that he also ate the meat meat of rodents reptiles birds antelopes boars zebras giraffes elephants hippopotamus cheetahs and etc living in such climate they manufactured the tools and erected a bipedally which is a new adaptive character therefore homo habilis laid firm foundation for the human way of life if you are talking about his tool making traditions the homo habilis population created maintained and perpetuated the oldivian tool tradition or pebble tool tradition which is regional styles namely they are known as kefi kefian tradition and pre stalin bosch tradition they made tools out of pebbles which are called as stream pet pebbles usually which are oval in shape so which are actually oval in shape somewhat larger than first size and they have had some six or seven flakes knock around one side of the both sides of making cutting edge the type of tools which he has actually used they are the butchering size which has actually obtained we have obtained these tools in kubi fora area of lake turkana and the living floors the type of tools which he has actually used they are like a scrapers so these are the scrapers burins choppers and some pebbles he has also used pebbles which are actually in oval shape What is the purpose of these choppers? The choppers are simply stone pebbles chipped at one end to create sharp edge. They were used to cut skin, meat, or wood, to slice meat, to work on hides, to scrape or shape bone or wood into new tools. Why he has actually used these scrapers? Scrapers and chisels. He has used them for a specific purpose to scrape the skin on the animals. That is the reason why he has actually used these scrapers. And the reason why he has actually used these bur- burins is to extract the meat, uh, extract the meat, and uh, also to eat bones. So that is the reason why he has actually used these uh, burins. and if you are talking about the livelihood of a homo habilis a homo habilis adopted a survival strategy that included not only the gathering of vegetable foods but also an increase reliance on meat eating and therefore required a more elaborate stone tool kit some of the earliest implements were probably made up out of a bone horn wood skin and etc and if you are talking about the food gathering the prehistoric evidence at some sites indicate that homo habilis was also a food gatherer the stone tools could have been used to crush chop pound tough vegetables food such as roots these tools could also be used to make implements from other materials such as bone or wood If you are talking about the livelihood of Homo habilis, Homo habilis adopted a survival strategy that included not only the gathering of vegetable food but also an increasing reliance on meat eating and therefore required a more elaborate stone tool kit. And some of the earliest implements were probably made out of bone, horn, wood and skin. and just now we have understood that he is a food gatherer and who are the uh, people who are actually involved in this food gathering that is the women and children are involved in food gathering they used to gather roots nuts seeds berries fruits and men were involved in hunting and hence might have used skin bags wooden bowls and baskets 
The sharing of food had become very much voluntary and systematic among them in order to get a balanced diet for all the members of the group. Thus, we can say that Homo habilis were setting up of temporary camps. They used stone tools and hunting and scavenging on large animal. The division of labor. Thus, we can say that Homo habilis they have set up a temporary camps and they have used the stone tools for hunting and scavenging on large animal. And the division of labor has happened and it has bisected between the women and the men. And the sharing of the meat and gather vegetable food it they have distributed among the group of the members. And hunting, if you are talking about the hunting, Homo habilis population lived in tropical savannas which offered not only grain, seeds, and roots but also abundance um, other animals they became hunters beside being food gatherers they became predators beside herbivores they entered into the competitive world of large carnivore of other animals and in the previous slide we have already understood that uh, in what all animals they have actually feed it by this actually i am winding up the lecture unfortunately my stylus is not working that is the reason why i am not writing on the slides guys so in the next session we will discuss about dryopithecus ramapithecus and shivapithecus okay so if you appreciate our work do like share and subscribe hit the bell icon so that you will not miss any of the session and uh, that's all for the day meet you in